It's our third day in Lisbon, and if you're spending some time here, the inevitable question will pop in. Should you consider spending some time in Sintra? And my personal opinion, yes, 100%, this place should be on your radar, with a caveat, if you have some time. I'm so happy that traveling is finally back on track. Right now, I'm exploring everything that Lisbon has to offer for my upcoming guide. Look at all those natters behind me. This is where the magic happens. Today, we're heading to Sintra. And in this video, we're going to check out what's good to eat here, try some local specialties, have a proper look at one of the seven wonders of Portugal, figure out how to get there and how much everything costs, and show you one of the best sunset views in Lisbon. There is a lot of ground to cover, so let's go. The day started at the commercial square that is also known as the door to Lisbon. This guy on the horse is Joseph the First and is considered to be the city's hero. We'll talk more about him and the square in my upcoming Lisbon travel special. Moving on. Here's my genius for your breakfast. Freshly baked nata and a bica coffee at Cafe Manteigaria, a perfect morning treat. Followed by a shot of local traditional medicine cherry liquor called Ginginha. This place is the second oldest stall in Lisbon and has been in operation for over 180 years. It also opens from seven o'clock in the morning, which is quite convenient. Nice. Let's chat transport. Sintra is located only 30 kilometers away from Lisbon, and I think the best way to get there is by train. I love how convenient and affordable this route is. A return ticket will cost you only 5 euros, and trains run every 30 minutes. If you're buying tickets for more than one person, please use the ticket booth and not the machine, as that line was moving much quicker. The earliest train to Sintra leaves at 5.20 in the morning and the last train to Lisbon departs at 12.20 after midnight. It might sound like a bizarre thing to mention, but trust me, it is important. We just arrived. <laughs> so many people. Let's figure out what makes Sintra so special. The entire town is built on an elevation of 175 meters with the highest structure built all the way up on 480 meters. This is Peña Castle, it is absolutely gorgeous and it is the postcard to the entire region. The population of Sintra is only 385,000 people, which is dwarfed by the 3 plus million tourists that come here during peak summer season. In comparison, Lisbon gets about 15 million tourists, so if you are a part of the 70% of people that are not sure if Sintra is for you, here are some shots. So we're the type of people who actually travel off-season most of the time, just because tickets are cheaper and we're either for work. But this time we're traveling during the peak season and honestly, there are so many people outside, there are so many tuk-tuks around, happy to pick us up and take us to Peña Castle. The Sintra feels so much more alive, so much more hustly and bustly, and we literally are just super excited to go and explore all the castles here. It was a massive smile on my face being here again. <laughs> Whilst you're in Portugal, you must eat as much local food as possible, and Tashkentiga is a perfect place for that in Sintra. This restaurant serves petiscos, which are basically small plates that are meant for sharing. This is great, as you can try a lot of Portuguese dishes in one setting. So exciting! The local specialty is azeite cheese. It is gooey, cheesy deliciousness that's baked with ham and figs. And no, you don't slice it like I did. We later learned that the outer shell should not be eaten. We have also tried goat cheese and ham portobello mushroom, which was just a volcano of flavors, cuttlefish tempura, fried prawns, and octopus salad, which was absolutely amazing. My main takeaway is that Portuguese people really know how to cook, especially when it comes to seafood. Thank you, security. Anastasia. <laughs> this was nice. This is Sintra's National Palace here. 
It might look slightly unassuming from the outside, but inside there's some amazing decors. Plus there's some really cool love stories. So pop in if you have time. I have a confession to make guys. It's not our first time here in Sintra. We visited it three years ago with Jay when we we're here for work. And honestly, one thing I remember is that how difficult it was to abstract of all this beauty and just concentrate on work when we're here. One thing that I do remember is that during our five days here, we literally used to come to this Nata place every single morning and I can't wait to return back there. This place is buzzing today, so we're gonna try to take it slow and I think it's gonna be an amazing day. I love cafes in Portugal. The whole cafe scene here is well developed and affordable. This place is called Casa Periquita and it has been established in 1862. They're very well known for their specialty pastry called travesteiros, which literally translates to pillows. Essentially, it's a buff pastry with almond and cream inside. They're served fresh with powdered sugar on top and they are delicious. Caffeinated, buzzed and happy, we got into a cab and 20 minutes later... So we have arrived pretty late today, so we decided to wait out the queues and come in here after 3.30. So not that many people, still plenty of space to walk around and enjoy the beautiful views from and on Peña Castle. Guys, this castle doesn't feel real. I have been here twice, and both times it is legit hard to comprehend that this was built by humans. Here is what you need to know. Peña Castle is considered to be one of the seven wonders of Portugal, and it is one of the greatest works of the 19th century Romanticism. You will want to take many pictures, and you should, but please make sure that you will take some time to actually soak in the views on the castle as much as you can. My top travel tip will be, if the queues for the interior are longer than an hour, please prioritize the outer bits during your visit. And you also must walk on the outer wall, it's simply breathtaking. I don't think any camera will do this view justice. Like walking on the outer walls of the castle is experience in its own right and it's honestly so amazing and quite thrilling. I'm not scared of heights, but um, yeah, it's, it's a little bit scary. Benya Castle's interiors were an absolute blast to explore. It was very cool to see the life with epic views before the internet. My main highlight was walking through the church as it was the original structure before the entire castle was built around it. My biggest fear of visiting Peña Castle was the fact that it's our second time and from a very personal experience I can say that second visits quite rarely come close to those first time impressions but I'm so happy to say Peña Castle has been absolutely magnificent and so breathtaking and as beautiful as I remembered. By this point we've clocked in 25,000 steps and more emotional excitement than I can handle. I had to make a tough call between rushing to another castle or catching some epic sunset views in Lisbon. Honestly, I wish I had more time in Sintra, and I know for sure that Quinta de Regaleira and Moorish Castle are absolutely worth the visit. I've learned from my trip, and I've put together a bite-sized guide to a day in Sintra. It is all freshly baked and linked in the description for you, my lovelies. And if you are enjoying this video so far, a sub to this channel will be epic. Now, let's change that music. And here are, as promised, the sound of years. I should be living my life. Hey. Because time won't wait for me. I ought to throw a party tonight. Hey. Me and my friends, I get wasted. Uh, and I'll be happy that I made it. Yeah, to the end of the day. Uh, that's right. So I guess I throw a party tonight. Hey. It's been a really long day for me. I should be living my life. Hey. Because time won't wait for me. I ought to throw a party tonight. Hey.